Right, great to see such a great uh, response to the uh, program. Uh, my name is Julian, my title is Sifu. So Sifu basically translates to uh, like fatherly teacher or parental teacher. Back in China's past when you would learn Chinese martial arts, you'd often live with your teacher and they would become like your surrogate parent. So we just maintain that, that tradition, okay. Um, I'll have some helpers with, uh, with me today. This is Chen Po. He's going to be helping out Iling and Kim. So if they'll be, you know, floating around. When we go into some of the techniques, uh, they'll be able to help you with uh, some of the footwork or some of the positioning if you make a mistake, what have you. Ask them, please. Um, all right, has anyone heard of Wing Chun before? Does anyone know anything about this system of martial art? No? Hands up? No? Okay. Wing Chun supposedly was developed by a woman. There's no written evidence of substantiated history, but that's the verbal tradition. Uh, a young girl called Yim Wing Chun was taught by a Buddhist nun called Moi. Who was uh, so really quite a unique system in the sense that it's one of the only martial arts in the world known to be developed by women. Um, as I said, there was no written evidence to substantiate the history, but the legend goes. Okay, um, it works very differently to most martial arts systems. Rather than uh, trying to memorize lots and lots and lots of techniques, has anyone done any self-defense before? Hands up if you've done any self-defense programs. Yeah, sure. And someone else said yes, no? Okay, of course. But generally what happens in these courses they, is they give you lots of different techniques on how to deal with. Someone grab you like this or someone hold you like this. Do this, that and the other. And they give you lots of techniques. And what happens is you might go to this course two or three times. In each court class you may learn two or three different techniques. But what happens is you just get a head full of techniques and it's very hard to put those techniques into the hard drive, so to speak. Yeah, you can't think about the technique you're about to apply when someone attacks you. Yeah, you can't think about it. You have to be able to react. You can't suddenly just go through that filing cabinet and say, that's that technique I learned, you know, two, two months ago, two years ago. Okay, so Wing Chun differs in the sense that it's not technique based, but principle based. Principle being a set of rules or guidelines that we can apply to any self-defense situation. I'll take you through just a few principles, but before we do, I need to take you through a few other, bit, uh, you know, a little bit of theory. Okay, understand, even if you're a man, the person who attacks you in the street doesn't want to fight you. A lot of these, a lot of martial art courses to think, want to teach you how to fight. It's not about fighting, it's about surviving. Okay? The person who attacks you does not want to fight you. They want to beat you up. They want to dominate you. They're not walking around looking for people bigger and stronger than them. So oh, that guy looks really tough. I'm going to go try myself. No. They're cowards. They're bullies and they want to dominate you. Okay. So we must assume, doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, the person who attacks you will have a physical advantage. Height, strength, reach, weight, athleticism, or all of the above. You have to assume that. The only time someone smaller and weaker than you is prepared to attack you is if they also have an advantage. It's a surprise attack. They come up from behind you, which is often the case. They are armed. They have a weapon, a knife, a syringe, a stick. It's a multiple attack. There's a group. Or they have drugs or alcohol in their system or they have a mental disorder. This is the only time someone smaller and weaker than you is really prepared to attack you. So we have to go into self-defense situations with the mentality that they're going to have an advantage. Always. Okay. Now saying that, we need to now observe some stages of combat. Stages of combat refer to different ranges between you and a potential attacker. Just like a tennis court has different areas that signify different things, so does combat. So the first stage of combat is non-contact. Pretty easy to uh, think about what non-contact is. You're outside a physical range of combat. I'm going to do this with Chempo. Chempo, just come up. All right. At non-contact, we physically cannot touch each other with any part of our bodies. We cannot grab, we cannot kick from here. But this is where generally you're getting that verbal attack or that menacing feeling from someone. You know, they go, why'd you take my car park? Or whatever it is, 
there's a verbal interaction occurring, but you cannot touch each other. The second stage of combat is about here. Now this changes a little bit because now, can I hit him? No, I can't strike him. But if his hands are up in front of him or he's, he's threatening me, I can grab at the wrist. I cannot kick him with the front leg, but I can kick him directly from the rear leg. And this is vice versa. So the only two things we can make contact with is grabbing at the wrist, kicking from the rear leg. The next stage of combat is exchange stage. Now this one speaks for itself. We can exchange blows now. You can be grappling, tearing, someone's grabbing you by the hair, by the clothing. They can punch to all the major targets, vice versa. Okay? So this is really only three. We're going to look at three. Non-contact, contact, exchange stage. Okay, thank you, Jimpo. All right. Now, we're thinking about attack. Now, most of you are probably here in response to some of the violence that's been going on with women on the streets. It's been, you know, really highlighted in the media the last few months. But I want to explain something to you which is really important. 80%, 80 and more percent, attacks happen not from strangers, which is what you're hearing in, in the media. It happens from people that you know, relatives, work colleagues, boyfriends, family members. Yeah, okay, so when you go and you do self-defense courses and they're telling you to, you know, you're you know, injure this person, you've got to break that arm, you've got to do this. You can't do that to your uncle who got drunk at the barbecue, who's, who's being a bit silly and being a bit aggressive. You don't want to, you know, rip his eyeball out. Okay, so we have to, the attack, the response to your, your self-defense has to fit the environment you're in, yes? Now, self-defense starts before you're even in contact, like I said, non-contact. Now, women have great intuition. They know when things are not feeling good, yeah? And they're also really good negotiators. You know why I know that? Because my partner, CJ, which you probably met, she goes, go do that job that I told you to do. And I say, no, I'm not doing that. You know what I'm doing in two minutes? That job. All the time, I'm always doing it. So they're very good, you guys are very good at getting what you want through negotiation. Um, this is very important, okay? So you have to work, work off your intuition and you know when you're walking down the street and you feel that guy, look at that strange guy walking across the street, he's looking at you, you guys know. Straight away, he might be 20 meters away, you still know. So these are some of the things you have to tap onto. Now, I also say, look, at this point where you're at non-contact, and you're in situations where it might be dark and car park or a park area or whatever it is, Use your better judgment, all right? If you need to go through the car park to get to your car, have your keys ready, always, to get straight in the car, all right? If you don't have to go through that dark park area, don't go through the park area. Take the longer lit, lit area, okay? So these are some things you already know, okay? But, okay, you're in a situation. Something's happened. You've taken someone's car park, or they think you've taken someone's car park, or you, I don't know, you, you drove over someone's cat, or whatever it is and there's an argument, a disagreement. You know, you know it's not a self-defense situation yet, but this is where it starts. You're having an argument or a disagreement with someone. What usually then happens is it escalates into a physical confrontation. Now, when you're in an argument or a disagreement, by all means, make eye contact. Use a bit of verbal self-defense. Use a bit of your intellect to try to get yourself out of these situations before they become aggressive. Like I said, negotiate. Get yourself out of these situations. However, your eye contact has to change as soon as your, your, whoever this person is tries to intimidate you. How does a person try to intimidate us? Hands up. Does anyone know? Give me a, a form of intimidation. Everyone's experienced intimidation. Your teachers intimidate children. <laughs> I remember being intimidated by my teachers. How do people intimidate us? Yeah. Swearing. Verbal intimidation. Yelling, swearing, verbally saying they're going to hurt you. And what's the other intimidation? 
physical intimidation, making a scary look, pumping, making them, you know, pumping their chest out, pointing their fingers, making clenched fists. This is physical intimidation. Now, it doesn't matter if it's verbal or physical intimidation. We do not make eye contact anymore. Why not? We're taught as children to look at the eye when someone's talking to us. They're not talking to us anymore. They're trying to scare us. They're trying to threaten us. It's gone past the point of, you know, like I said, at the beginning when you drove over the cat, you say, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to, whatever. But as soon as they start threatening us, they're not trying to sort it out anymore. Okay, so we don't make eye contact any longer. Where do we look then? Any idea? We look at our attacker's closest elbow. Look at the closest elbow. Why? Why do we look at the closest elbow? Okay, Chimpo, come on. My, if I, if Chempo is defending himself against me, the hand that is closest to him, my closest hand is the closest threat. The one that can grab him first or potentially hit him first. My closest hand. But we don't look at the hand because the hand moves quicker than the eye. You know this by seeing a magician. He, you know, he creates illusions by having that ability to move faster than your eye can catch. And he pulls a coin out of your ear. Abracadabra. But if you look at my elbow, and I do this, it hardly moves at all, because it's the fulcrum, it's the hinge. Now, you have to talk to the hand, talk to the elbow. Yeah, seriously, because he's trying to scare you now, and what happens when you get that scary look, that menacing look, your heart starts going, you start getting worried about what their face is doing, they start yelling. Don't make it a personal issue anymore, even though it started off as a personal issue where you ran over the cat or you took whatever the problem was, you're looking at the eye, don't look at that menacing look anymore. We're now breaking down the human form, the human structure as a machine that's governed by certain principles. My arms don't bend, my arms bend forward but they don't bend backwards and my legs bend backwards but they don't bend forwards. So there's certain rules that apply to the human structure. Now, this point is the closest threat, this one right here. But this point moves much slower. And I'm, the way I'm going to show you this, if, if I do, this is a, a basic boxing jab. Now you see my elbow sort of flaring out up and to the side here? On this type of punch, the elbow moves two and a half times slower than the fist. So this point on a straight punch, as well as coming forward, is moving two and a half times slower. If I do a round movement, now a straight line is quicker than a circle, so when I bring my elbow back and come around, it moves four times slower. If I want to strike or kick or grab with my back hand, what does my leading elbow have to do? Has to try, try come backwards. So you think, oh, well, this is going to be really complicated. How do we read the body? Well, the first thing you have to do is start practicing. It's not easy. Just like learning to read as children. You take yourself back to sounding out letters, putting two letters together, you have a little word, then you have a string, a few of them together, you have a sentence, and then you have a paragraph, and then you can read. But it's not easy, you have 26 letters. Believe me, there's not that many things the human body can do. They can do straight movements, and they can do round movements. Round movements, that's all. Okay, so a straight movement, the elbow moves two and a half times slower than the fist. If it's a round movement, the elbow moves four times slower. Okay, so we learn to watch the elbow to see through basic body mechanics what type of attack will occur. Okay, now the next point for the leading elbow is really important. Come over, Chimpo, and just face everyone in a front stance. Just put one side forward, one side forward. Okay. The leading elbow is a reference point. This point cuts me, cuts Chen Po into two distinct halves. Okay. Inside the leading elbow, over here, this side is called the open side. Right here is, I don't feel too good because Chen Po can use both his hands and both his legs to attack me. Yeah? Okay. But if I move to this side, hey, I feel a little bit better. Okay, have a seat. All right. Someone like to help me. Someone like to help me. Put your hand up. Don't be shy. 
Come on, I'm going to pick someone if someone doesn't put their hand up. Okay, come on. So, what was your name? Edlund. Edlund. Okay. So, Edlund, I'm going to go into that position. Edlund, I want you to come and stand in front of me here. Okay, now, stand right, right in front of me here. Put your guard up like this. Okay, do you feel safe there, Edlund? No. No. Stand exactly like me. Face me front on. Now put your dukes up. That's it. All right, so why don't you feel safe? Because you could headbutt arms, legs, knees. Okay, all right, put your hands like me. All right, so is it even? Why not? She's smaller, exactly. <laughs> I got a longer reach. I'm heavier than her. I'm stronger than her. So for Evelyn to try to stand in front of me right here and trade off blows, she's already fighting an uphill battle. Does everyone understand that? Doesn't even, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. If you fight directly in front, we're not fighting for a trophy. We're not fighting at the same weight division. It is not a sport. It is not friendly. This is no good to stand in front. So Evelyn, I want you to come around to this side. Now when you're center line, just stand in front of me. There's two it's, we have two line theories in this system. Center line, which is an imaginary line that cuts us directly in, down the middle. Along your center, you have a lot of vulnerability. The bridge of the nose, your throat, your solar plexus, your, your sternum, your groin. You get hit in the center, very dangerous. We need to protect our center. We also have what we call central lines. Lines that start from the center, but go off on angles like so. So the way you can think about this is, if I was a sword fighter, I would, a fencer. I turned my sort body side on and I put the weapon on the central line and minimalized my target area, turning myself side on, protecting my center line. Now, Evelyn's now on my blind side. Evelyn, I want your center line to line up to both my shoulders. So turn and face me. Yep. Now, when your center's turn across, it, move this way a little bit more. Yep. Okay. Face me there. Okay. Put your hands up from there. Do you feel safer there than you did here? A bit. A bit. Good. Now, the, the advantage Evelyn has, it's Evelyn? Yeah? Edelyn. Edelyn. Okay. Okay. The advantage she has from this position is she can use both her hands and both her legs immediately to attack and defend. But me as the aggressor now, if I want to attack her from this position, I can only do it one movement at a time. Doesn't matter what I want to do from this position, it has to be one movement at a time. So I can swing, which is a round movement, and block, block, and straight line punch, punch, whack. Yeah. Now I can't reach with this arm unless I turn, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But I can swing this way, block, and punch, whack, good. What about this? Block, punch, whack. Everything I'm doing is a circle to get to her. It doesn't matter what I want to do, it has to be circular. Everything she's doing is a straight line. I can try to kick from here. I can kick with my front foot, which is one movement. I can kick with my back foot, which is also one movement, maybe this way. But you don't have to block. You don't have to move. Put your right hand out like this. Yeah, right near my shoulder. As soon as I go to kick you, I want you to push right here. Ready? Now immediately, she take my balance. She destroys my ability to kick her by attacking my structure. Now, she was very nice. She just gave me a nice push. But she could be far more offensive on how she attacks my balance. All right, so here's the next question. How do I use this hand? How do I use this leg? If I want to use both my hands and both my legs against her, what do I need to do first? I have to turn. I have to physically step. And I can only step one leg at a time, which is one movement. Or I step my back leg, which is also one movement. Okay, have a seat. Chimpo, come back up. Now, this is very important because if you can understand, first thing you do is you look to the closest elbow. What that closest elbow, put your gut up, come right to the front, put your gut up. That leading elbow tells me where the blind side is immediately. Now, if I start moving over here, what is Chimpo compelled to do? Now, he opened the door, so I rang the bell. You understand? Now, it's very important that I did something before he turned. Or well, as he was turning, I did something before I kicked him. Because by kicking alone, especially in front, a lot of self-defense is, oh, yeah, you just kick him in the groin. That's it. <laughs> no, not so good. Because if he blocks it, what is it? What I've, I've given my, you know, you play cards. You don't want to give your cards away. You show them your cards. So we've got to be smarter than that. 
So we want to make them do two things. Okay. Can I reach him? Can I reach his eye? Now, what was your name? Sasha. Sasha. If I do that, pointing down like that at Sasha, does that threaten you? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what if I do that? Yeah, that's more threatening. I only move my hand like a couple of centimetres. It's like if you have a gun pointing down and you say, hey. And then you suddenly, whoa, you feel all that intention off the barrel because you know what can come out of that gun. So what I'm showing you here is, even though I can't reach him from here with my hands, I'm at contact stage, yes? And if I thrust my hand, what is his instinct telling him to do? Put your hands down. Now, what do you, where, if he want to do this, or what do you want to do with your hand? Bang! As soon as he lifts his hand to defend, or moves his body to defend, you attack the groin. So you're not, you're not giving your cards away. You're saying, hey, look over here. And then you do something over here, like an, an illusionist. You make them think one thing, you do another. All right, but it makes it far more effective because you guys are out, okay, and, and you're, you're out shopping with your girlfriend. Don't put your hands down. And you go, oh, but look at these beautiful shoes. What does she do? She turns to look at the beautiful shoes because it's your natural instinct to, when you're just talking to someone, when you move to the blind side, the compulsion is to turn. Now you have advantages from having a person turn. Chempo, just come over here on my blind side. The first advantage Chempo is going to have as I turn is the same as when I kicked before. As soon as I go to turn, what happens to my balance? I'm off balance. Well, he can attack my balance, let's just say that, because I'm going onto one leg to turn. The second advantage you're going to have is he's going to open up that center line. We talked about it just a moment ago. That center line offers all that vulnerability, the bridge of the nose, the mouth, the throat, the sternum, the groin. And as I turn, champ, uh, you sit down. You, where are you? Come on, come on. Okay, so let's imagine you're standing on my blind side, yes? Put your hand up, your right hand, your hand you're comfortable with. Let's imagine there's a handful of sand in her hand. As I turn, I want you to throw the sand at my face. Ah, now kick, crunch. I want you to kick with the same side though. So you thrust, kick with the same side, okay? But don't kick me, please. Okay, all right. So I turn, kick, boom. This is a very basic, basic technique, but understand it's done from the blind side. The way we get to the blind side and identify the blind side is look to the leading elbow. Yeah, okay? All right. Now, thank you, thank you. Before we start that technique, one more thing. We're at non-contact. As I said, you know your, your feeling is something bad is about to happen with maybe a person. So, what, what should you be thinking before anything? What's the first thing you should be thinking? Any ideas? Hands up, any ideas? Come on. Yes. Quickest exit signs. Two exit signs. Already, every time I go into a building, I always look to where the exits are, just in case there's a fire or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm paranoid. But you always look to where the exits are. That might mean out in the street, all sorts of different areas. Maybe you can't outrun someone. So what do you do then? You can't outrun someone because, you know, when someone is threatening, threatening you, come up, Jempo. No, Iling, Iling, come up. You sit down. <laughs> Iling's like, oh, no, he called me up. Okay. She can't run away from this situation now. Why not? Yeah, turn around. You understand? It's straight away. You, you'll, get, you'll get caught. As soon as you turn your back, you can't. You have to deal with sometimes these situations. You have to deal. You can't always run away. Okay, so what do we do? We find friends. We don't phone friends, we find friends. And I don't mean people that you know. I mean a handful of gravel, handful of sand, a stick, a small stick you can put in your hand, it, a wheelie bin. Yeah, a wheelie, a between your soul, a get behind a car. I saw a great clip on, on the internet where a guy was firing, shoot, trying to shoot this man, and he was h hiding behind a tree, which was about this thin. And the tree's right between us, and just imagine you come over to the bag here, and I've got the gun, and I'm about this far away, and you're hiding behind the tree, and they look at me, look at me, and I'm trying to shoot you, and he's missing. He's missing. Every time he shoots, he misses. 
And you think, how, how amazing. Just a tree. This is simple, simple avoidance. Get yourself a wheelie bin and keep it between you and your opponent. Get behind a car. Get a stick. Get a handful of sand. Anything that you can then defend yourself with. Yeah? Okay? These are things. You find friends. Okay. Thanks, Ellie. All right. So I just wanted, yeah, look for exits, look for friends, and also if an incident occurs and you're injured, have numbers in your phone, programmed into your phone. I know it's easy to type in triple O and say, hey, I'm in trouble, but sometimes you're in shock. You're in shock and you go, oh, you don't even know what you're doing anymore. When people go into shock, they stop breathing. They, they, they get a, that a huge adrenaline rush, that, that dump into your system, that affects fine motor, motor movement. It's not easy to think when, when something threatening is happening. So that's why we come to uh, programs like this, to build up your confidence, to put you in situations that may or may not help you get out of these situations. But look, what I'm going to give you today is that simple thrust and that kick movement. We're also going to look at push. Okay, push and flick, or flick and push, I should say. Okay, all right, so CJ, come up. Just flick my hand. Okay, flick, flick. Yeah, okay. It's pretty simple, isn't it? She's just flicking my hand. All right, yeah, good. What's your name? Lee. Lee, put your hand up, Lee. Nice and high. Okay, I just want you to feel, okay. Now, we aim this at an eye. You can imagine, yes? If you hit someone in the eye like this, it doesn't matter how big and strong they are, you're going to cause a reaction. You want to feel? Put your hand up. Just put your hand up, yeah. Hold it up nice and high. Hold it up. Yeah. Oh! Okay. So you can imagine what it feels like when you, when you get that in the eye. Now, you don't have to crunch and, you know, hands aren't made for striking. What are they made for? picking things up. So we don't have to be uh, clubbing away because the human head is the equivalent weight of a bowling ball. Ever punched a bowling ball? Of course not. Because you're going to break all these little tiny bones and ligaments and, and nerve endings are going to be damaged. So would I punch the side of this wall? Of course not. But look. Much more effective, yes? Because it's dispersed the force. And the flick very efficient, very effective. Now, when you open up your fingers, it's like a shotgun because you spray your fingers. Then we have what we call BLG, which is more like a, not the shotgun, it's more like a rifle. Okay. Pop your, someone here, pop your hand up for me. So this one was the flick when I did it like this. But if I do it like that, side on, then you get a lot more force to the point. Ever stepped on a partner's foot with your high heel, accidentally, when he had his bare feet, you're going to lose a friend, I know, because all that force is penetrated into that, magnified into that point, all your body weight, magnified to that point, yeah. So it's the same with the finger. When you whip your finger out, all the force is then generated to the tip. You, know, you might hurt your fingers, yes, you might break a nail, but this might save your life, you understand. So you're aiming for the throat. You're aiming for the eye. Ooh, the eye, I can't poke someone in the eye. You know, sometimes I do self-defense courses and the girl goes, oh no, I can't do that, I can't poke some." I say, why not? Oh, because I just don't feel comfortable. And I say, well, okay, let's put it this way. You're walking with your daughter. You're walking with your niece. And someone attacks them. What are you going to do? I'm going to rip their eyes out. Then they're prepared to kill the guy. I say, well, why? What is the difference? What is the difference in protecting yourself or protecting this door? You know. So, after a week, they're all poking all the guys. The guys are all walking around like, I'm not training with her anymore. Okay, so look. You have to get into a habit of learning this flick. So well, I think we'll start with that today. The flick and the kick off the same side. Okay. Now, it's going to be very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to put one hand up like this. Yeah, put your hands up like this. Now, we use natural stance theory. What's natural stance theory? Do we go, hey? Of course not. We're saying, hey, listen, I don't know you. Stay away from me. Whatever it is, things that you naturally do with your hands. People like to talk with their hands, yeah? So we use 
positions that we're naturally going to do and when we talk with that we're going to use in self-defense. So she'll put her hands up, she'll flick out with the hand and she'll just do a kick in front of me. So you do it with your partner, you flick, kick. You just don't kick each other, all right? <laughs> flick, kick, all right? Now some of you know each other, some of you don't know each other. I want you to stand up, I want you to go to someone you don't know and introduce yourself, okay? All right, in fact, say hello to other people around you, then grab a partner, let's start doing this. Get some space in the room, okay. All right, guys, all right. Okay, so just stop there for a moment. Come over again, just come over and have a seat. I know we're, we'll run out of time quickly, but really today is the information session. Now, if you guys are coming to multiple classes during the week, we'll be doing more technical stuff, but you'll have the theory involved now. Watch the leading elbow, move around to the blind side, because even though we're doing this technique directly in front, it works better when you force a person to create a redundant movement, a wasted movement. Now if Kim comes up, and she's standing in front of me right here, and I start threatening her, where does she go? Yeah, just move to the blind side. Just don't even make contact with me. If I just get around, just run around there, go. For automatically, she's forcing me to turn. I have to. Now when she thrusts at me, I feel uncomfortable here already from her on my side, because I can't, uh, we don't work well backwards. You don't see the 100 meter running backwards race in the Olympics. So at this point, I have to turn. Now I can only turn two ways. I can step my front foot, or I can step my back foot. Yeah? When she does, she thrusts that at my face and, and kicks, yes. So it works better from the blind side. Yeah? Now, she's kicked me. What does she do now? Because she might have hurt me, she might have just slightly injured me. So she has to then push me. Push me? What's a push? That doesn't do anything. Of course it does. We don't push with the elbows out like this. Because then you're only using your arm strength. You bring your elbows inside the frame of your body. Inside. Because then it comes from your legs. Okay. So, how can I demonstrate this? Thanks, thanks, Kim. Thanks, Kim. Who would like to help me? Hands up. Hands up. Come on, don't be shy. Okay, come over. All right, what was your name? Mei Ling. Mei Ling, okay. Are you right-handed? Yeah. Okay, put your right hand like this. Now, why I'm doing this is because most people punch with their elbows out like this, so elbows out. Okay. But if you go back far enough, they didn't used to punch like that. And you look at old boxes, old qu uh, before they introduced the rule system to boxing, they box like this. Yeah, and people giggle because they think it looks funny. But it's more efficient because they didn't wear gloves. As soon as you put gloves on your hands, it changes the whole idea of real self-defense. Now, when you punch like this, now I want you to make a strong fist because I'm going to slap your hand a little bit. I want you to watch her body. You see what happened? It turns a whole body like this. That's because the force travels down the arm to the elbow, has nowhere to go. So it turns the whole body. Mei Ling, I want you to bring your elbow in now, inside the frame of your body. Hold it strong, hold it strong. Feels stronger, yeah? Because the legs support the position. Now, turn and face me, put that elbow out again. Now I'm gonna put her hand on my chest right here and I'm gonna be in a very weak position. You're going to push me over. Go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she got there eventually. But did you see what she did with her body? Her lean, she leaned forward. She's pushing with her weight. And then she lost her balance a little bit when she pushed me over, yeah? OK, put your elbow in. Right inside the frame of your body. Now push me. Go. <laughs> you see the response? So different, yes? Why? Because the elbow is supported by her legs. Now. The biggest muscle groups in our body are our quadriceps and our glutes. We want to access that. Because if I'm dealing with a guy who has arms like tree trunks, and you know the guy I'm talking about, he's got no neck, <laughs> he just comes out of his shoulders, I do not want to have a fist fight with this guy. I don't want to fight his strengths, I want to fight his weaknesses. So by using my legs to control a person's structure, now what do I mean by that? Just put your hand up. 
now. Make a strong stance. Yeah, put your hand up now. Look. <laughs> now I'm using, I'm taking her balance, and what am I getting when I take the balance? The blind side. When my center line lines up with these shoulders, what that means is I can use two arms at the same time. But she can only fight me one movement at a time. That's not fair, is it? That's the way we like it. Because being on the, in, in a street situation is not fair. It shouldn't be fair. Because they're already fighting with you with advantages. Height, strength, reach, weight. I have lots of women who train at this academy. And often they do self-defense programs. And they do a couple of pro uh, classes and they come in the, the, on the maybe a third or fourth. Oh, you know, my boyfriend, he keeps wanting to see what I can do with self-defense. Or someone trying to grab me and do it and I can't get out of it. And I said, well, listen, you, know, have to, you have to be sneaky. You say, okay, I'll show you some, but I'll show you later. And when they're on the couch together, they're watching television, he's nice and relaxed. And the, you ask him for the remote. You lean over for the remote. When he brings it back to you, your fist. <laughs> right there. And you say, that's what I taught you. Because it's not about fighting them front on, you understand? It's not about being fair. It's about going to this position. And yeah, she wants to turn. It's a natural instinct. Then we thrust. Then we kick from that position. Okay? All right. Does anyone have any questions? Thanks, Maylene. Does anyone have, I know there's been a lot of talking today, but I think it's important because I could show you technique, technique, lots and lots and lots of techniques. But I guarantee you, as soon as you walk out that door, it's going to go in here, it's gone. So if, for example, like if someone came up really close to you and was yes. intimidating you, sure. closely, how do you attack them from there when... Well, okay, this is, this is a situation that you don't want. If you've got it dealing with, again, family members, partners, spouses, all this stuff, you do, when they're being aggressive, you, you, you know the warning signs. When someone starts intimidating you, like I said, you know when it's intimidation. You know it's not them trying to sort out an argument anymore. They're threatening you. They're scaring you. Do not let them get close enough to threaten you, to physically get a hold of you. Like I said, if you stand up with me, Sophie, and I start coming towards you. I'm going to back off. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever's happening probably starts from a distance straight away. So, what happens is you put your hands up and you say, hey, don't come near me. Don't come near me. I don't know you. So what is this? Is this... A, is this, is this is this a guard? Yes. What is this? Look, don't, don't come near me. You just put one hand up, right between you've put yourself and your opponent, but you don't straighten your arm out so he can grab something. Just put your hand up in front of you. Don't come near me, don't come near me. I don't know you, you're a stranger, or you're being, you're being threatening, you're being aggressive, I don't like it, stay away from me. So what this is, is like when the sword fighter draws his sword and puts the sword directly between. Why does the, why does the sword fighter put the weapon directly between himself and his opponent? It doesn't matter what school of sword fighting, they put that sword directly between themselves and their opponent. They don't do this with their swords out to the side. They put it in the middle between themselves. Why? It gives you the greatest offense and defense. The quickest path is a straight line. We made that distinction before. So if you stand up straight. Okay, watch. <laughs> a punch, a travel about 0.2 of a second through the center. We do not want our opponent to exploit that direct path. So we put up our sword in front. By putting that weapon right in my hands in front of me now, what am I forcing them to do if they want to do something? If you want to touch me here, You're gonna defend. they have to come around. Anything that comes around takes longer to get to me, yes? However, I'm not going to even use this hand now. Come around. What did we just do? Thrust, kick. Doesn't matter what. Now, a natural position also is when you're dealing with, with situation, you're front on. Yes? However, when you get into range of kicking, we want to turn side on a little bit. But at non-contact, we want to be front on. 
because it's a natural position, isn't it? But what is the practical reason? Why would I want to stand and face my opponent front on? Any idea? Does anyone watch tennis? They're waiting for the, the we're playing tennis, they're waiting for the service, they're on the baseline, they're in a neutral stance, they're waiting for that ball, or the goalie in a soccer match, he's protecting his goal front on like this. It gives you mobility. It gives you the ability to move in any direction. So mobility is very important at non-contact. But as soon as we're in contact stage, now we have to turn that center line away from our opponent a little bit because we don't want to present all those targets. And we want to put up that fencing hand, that hand forward. Okay, all right. We're just about out of time, thank you. We don't want to let a person get that close to us that they're threatening us. I don't know, it's, you know, how do you deal with a situation where they're coming towards you and they're threatening, it's, it's scary. You have, to, you have to keep them away from you and you have to make them respond to you. As soon as they go like this, you elbows in. Tomorrow, if you're here, we're going to be do it, dealing with that push, <coughs> that step and push. Okay? We're going to be looking to flick, the kick, the push. We're going to be doing that from in front, and then we're going to be doing it from the blind side. Okay? We're going to start moving around a little bit more. Okay? Um, does anyone have any questions before we finish? I know it's still a lot to take in, but I'll go through it again and again. Again, it's more about the principle, the rules. It's like I've said, okay, today we're learning basketball. <coughs> now, you may know a couple of basketball moves. You've got to throw the ball through the hoop and you've got to bounce it while you run. This is like knowing how to kick someone in the groin and push them. Two moves, very simple moves. But you don't know all the rules to basketball unless you get in and play. Because after a while, you're going to make a mistake and the umpire is going to blow his whistle and say, hey, don't do that. And you say, what? And you say, whatever it is. And you go, ah, oh, I can't do that next time because I'm going to get penalized for it. So that's why you come to class. So when you make mistakes, you know, you abide by the principle, move to the blind side, watch the leading elbow, okay? then you start to build on a, on a principle, a, a rule system. Again, as I said, you go to that side, you're going to force them to turn. When you learn to exploit that understanding, it, it is very, very effective. Okay? All right. All right, um, so tomorrow CJ Sophie is going to be doing a lot more demonstration, demonstrating. So uh, if you haven't, didn't meet Sophie tonight, she's going to be doing a lot of these techniques. If we have new people, I'll probably go off with the new people and go through some of the principles we went through today. And a lot of you guys, if you come in again tomorrow, will be looking at applying some of these techniques with the principles attached. Okay? All right. I hope you've enjoyed it today. All right. Thanks a lot. Stand up with us. All right, in this system, we do a courtesy, which is like um, the only two places you, you bow in today's society is in court and martial arts schools. We do a left hand fist, a right hand open. It just means uh, thank you. All right, thank you. Good. All right, well done, everyone. Good job.